You speak first. I yield. Mr. President. The Senator from Pennsylvania. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, well, I thank uh, the senator from Iowa for his comments. Uh, he uh, cited, I, I think, two principal arguments, uh, concerns of his. One, the fact that it has not, this legislation has not yet been considered by his committee. And the second, that there are states taking action in various ways uh, that ought to be contemplated. I, I'm going to address both of those, but I'd like to begin at the beginning for what is, for me, the beginning, Mr. President. And, and then let me start by stating I am a strong supporter of the Child Care Development Block Grant Bill. I voted for this bill in March. I look forward to voting for it again. But one of the very reasons that I support the bill is that this bill that we're going to vote on, the Child Care Development Block Grant Bill, addresses the issue that I'm trying to address in my bill, and that is protecting our children from sexual and violent predators. I'm the father of three young kids. I can't imagine anything more important than the safety and security of my kids, and I think most Americans would agree with me on that. Well, the Child Care Development Block Grant Bill takes an important step in that direction. It requires criminal background checks on daycare workers. And because it does, it's going to provide a level of protection for the 1.6 million children in federally subsidized daycare, protection from the sexual and violent predators who might otherwise obtain jobs as child care workers or employees of these daycare centers. My question, Mr. President, is why are we stopping there? Why are we interested only in protecting the kids in federally subsidized daycare? The 1.6 million children there deserve protection. But what about the 49.6 million children who are a little bit older and they're in our nation's elementary, middle, and high schools? Don't they deserve the same protection from sexual or violent predators as the really young kids do? See, I think we need to act now to protect all of our kids. That's what I'm trying to do here. And it's a very urgent matter. Uh, Senator Manchin talked of the, the absolutely horrendous case of Jeremy Bell. That's how I became aware of this situation. And as Senator Manchin pointed out, it began in my state. Pennsylvania, it ended the story, the terrible story ended in Senator Manchin's state uh, when the perpetrator began molesting and abusing children. He was a teacher. He had uh, molested several boys and raped one before the school figured out what was going on. Unfortunately, the prosecutors never felt they had enough evidence to actually bring a case. The school dismissed the perpetrator, but then amazingly, this school in Pennsylvania helped this monster get a job at a school in West Virginia. And as Senator Manchin pointed out, he worked in West Virginia in exactly the same capacity that gave him an opportunity to abuse more kids. And this tragic story didn't end until he raped and murdered a 12-year-old boy. Well, justice has finally caught up with that teacher. He's going to spend the rest of his life in jail, which is frankly too good for him. But that's way too late for Jeremy Bell, his 12-year-old victim. And now, of course, we know Jeremy Bell is certainly not alone. As Senator Manchin pointed out, already this year, over 410 teachers and other school employees have been arrested across America for sexual assault or misconduct with children, 410. That's more than one per day. And let's, let's be clear. These are the people about whom we know enough and have enough credible evidence to actually have an arrest. How many more are out there, but the prosecutors aren't confident yet that they can make the case? And in contrast to the 410 that have happened so far this year, Back in April, when Senator Manchin and I first came to the floor and asked the Senate to pass our bipartisan bill, at the time, the number of teachers arrested was only 130. In the time that we've waited, we've gone from 130 teachers and other school employees arrested for sexual misconduct with children to now over 410. How much bigger does this number have to get before the Senate decides this is something we should address? Every one of these 410 stories represents a horrendous tragedy. One is a child whose abuse began at age 10 and only ended when at age 17 
She found herself pregnant with a teacher's child, a, a teacher's aide who raped a mentally disabled boy in his care, a kindergarten teacher who kept a child during recess and forced her to perform sexual acts on him, one teacher after another caught with images of child pornography on their computers, child pornography involving children as young as one years old. It's unbelievable stuff. And it's important, especially in my home state of Pennsylvania. 25 of these arrests have been in Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania teachers. And a recent study found that Pennsylvania is second in the nation for teachers who've been investigated for sexual misconduct with the children that are supposed to be in their care. So I think we need to be doing, we need to be acting now. We need to stop these tragedies. And our bipartisan bill, the Protecting Students from Sexual and Violent Predators Act, takes an important step toward that goal. It works to ensure that school employees we hire are not sexual or violent predators. In fact, the background check provisions in our bill are nearly identical to the background check provisions in the Child Care Development Block Grant Bill, the one that we're going to vote on. Specifically, the Protecting Students Against the Protecting Student Act requires background checks for all existing and prospective school employees who have unsupervised access to children. The background checks must be thorough, covering four databases, including national databases. That would be the FBI fingerprint check in the National Crime Information Center database, the National Sex Offender Registry, established by the Adam Walsh Act, the State Criminal Registry, and State Child Abuse and Neglect Registries. Now, let me give a recent example from the state of Alaska that illustrates just how important this requirement is. On August 29th, Alaska State Troopers arrested a middle school teacher in Keona, Alaska. The teacher had fled Missouri four years earlier to an escape and arrest warrant. Numerous witnesses accused the teacher over a decade of sexual and physical abuse of his own adopted children. This is hard to talk about because it's so disturbing, but I think we have to face it. The fact is he raped and starved his children. The children lit literally borrowed a hole in a wall, stole food from the freezer, heated it on a furnace in their home just to survive. This monster was able to obtain a teaching certificate in Alaska and teach in the state for four years. And when asked how could this have happened, the Alaska Department of Education explained that Alaska only checks the state's criminal registry when running a background check on a teacher, so his name never came up. Now, had Alaska searched the FBI criminal database as my bill requires, school would have learned that this monster was a fugitive in another state. The Protecting Student Acts forbid schools from hiring a teacher who's committed certain crimes, including any violent or sexual crime against a child, whether it's a misdemeanor or a felony. And this is necessary because all too often the predator will plead down to a misdemeanor when in fact he or she may be guilty of something more serious. The legislation also bans a horrible practice of a school knowingly helping a child molester obtain a new teaching job somewhere else so that he becomes a problem somewhere else. This, this practice, is, it sounds outrageous, it sounds incredible, but it happens. In fact, it happens so frequently, it's got its own name. It's called passing the trash. And finally, if a state fails to comply with these requirements, then it loses a portion of its funds under the Elementary Secondary Education Act. I mentioned earlier this is a bipartisan bill. Uh, it's, to say the least, bipartisan. This support is so broad in the House, it passed unanimously over a year ago in October of 2013. It was introduced by Democrat George Miller of California, co-sponsored by two Republicans and seven Democrats, including Frederica Wilson of Florida, who herself served as an elementary school teacher and principal for 20 years, Charlie Rangel of New York, Sheila Jackson Lee of Texas, and here in the Senate, as I mentioned, it has the bipartisan support of Senator Manchin, Senator McConnell, Senator Inhofe, and myself. Child advocates across America have endorsed the bill the National Children's Alliance, which oversees national child advocacy centers, the Children's Defense Fund, the National Center for Missing and Exploited, Exploited Children, the Pennsylvania Coalition Against Rape have all endorsed this bill. Law enforcement and prosecutors all support this bill. The Federal Law Enforcement Officers Association supports it. The Association of Prosecuting Attorneys, National District Attorneys Association. Teachers support this legislation. The American Federation of Teachers and the Pennsylvania School Board Association. So why, after a year, 
more than a year after the House passed this bill unanimously, why have we refused to act in the Senate? Well, some have argued that the federal government doesn't need to act, that we can leave it to the states. And some states have worked to address this problem to the extent that they can. Uh, recently, now, the senator from Iowa mentioned my home state of Pennsylvania has recently enacted legislation that deals with it. This is true, much to the credit of State Senator Tony Williams, a Democrat, and State Representative Dave Maloney, a Republican. The bill makes some much needed reforms to strengthen background checks and ban passing the trash within Pennsylvania. But as my friend Pennsylvania State Senator Tony Williams explained, under the U.S. Constitution, states cannot address the problem of child predators being passed across state lines. The jurisdiction of Pennsylvania ends at the Pennsylvania borders. There's nothing Pennsylvania can do to make it illegal for someone in another state to send into Pennsylvania a predator of this sort. And of course, the example of Jeremy Bell is just exactly one such case. As another example, recently in Las Vegas, Nevada, a kindergarten teacher was arrested for kidnapping a 16-year-old girl and infecting her with a sexually transmitted disease. The same teacher had molested six children, all fourth and fifth graders, several years before while working as a teacher in Los Angeles. The Los Angeles School District knew about these allegations how do we know they knew? Well, in 2009, the school district had recommended settling a lawsuit alleging that the teacher had molested children. Now, the Nevada school district specifically asked if there had been any criminal concerns regarding the teacher, and the Los Angeles school district not only hid the truth, but they provided three references for the teacher. Had my bill banning passing the trash been the law, maybe that 16-year-old child might have been spared. There's another fundament, fundamental reason why I think the federal government has to act, and it's a need to be accountable to the American taxpayer. When the federal government gives billions of dollars to states to help pay for the salaries of people who work with children, the federal government has a duty to make sure that it's not paying the salary of child molesters. It's a basic accountability that every taxpayer, I would think, should demand. And again, in this regard, our Protecting Students Bill is nearly identical to the Child Care Development Block Grant Bill that we're going to be voting on. Both the Child Care Development Block Grant Bill and our Protecting Students Acts, they, they create what is essentially a voluntary mechanism for states to enhance their security. Both bills provide that if a state accepts federal funds, the state government must pass the laws or regulations providing for the criminal background checks of persons who will work with children. Both bills provide that a state's compliance is essentially voluntary. A state that declines to improve its background checks foregoes federal funds. Under the Child Care Development Block Grant Bill, the state loses 5% of the funds under that bill. Under our Protecting Students Bill, the state loses federal funds on the, under the Elementary Secondary Education Act. Thus, both bills have the same worthy goal, the same principle of accountability for federal funds. They even have the same basic enforcement mechanism. Both bills were passed unanimously by the House of Representatives, the Child Care Development Block Grant Bill two months ago on September 15th, the Protecting Students Bill over a year ago on October 22nd, 2013. Now, if one bill has legal problems that preclude it from being passed, so does the other, but in fact, neither bill should be blocked. They both take the same approach, and they both provide an urgently needed measure of security for our kids. Now, others have argued, and we heard the senior senator from Iowa make the argument that the Senate, we should wait and let the Committee of Jurisdiction, the Help Committee, consider the bill first. Well, it's been over a year now that the Help Committee has chosen not to take any action on this bill. Senator Manchin and I have been working for months trying to pass this urgently needed legislation, but we've never been able to make progress with the committee. On April 10th of this year, Senator Manchin and I asked unanimous consent to pass our bill. The committee chairman objected. And next, the committee assured Senator Manchin and me that they'd work with our staffs and the committee would vote on the bill in July. The committee scheduled a vote on our bill in July, posted an announcement on its website that it was going to have a markup on this bill. And then at the last minute, the committee removed our bill from the agenda, had no consideration of it, denied us a vote. And we never really got an answer as to why. Again, Senator Mantra and I were assured that the committee would vote on this bipartisan bill. 
We were told the committee would work with our staffs during the five-week recess in August and provide a vote in September. But then the committee ignored our staffs during the August recess, and there was no such consideration in September. And now here we are, seven and a half weeks after we went on recess in September, and I still have no confidence that the committee is going to take this up and move this legislation. In the meantime, of course, child predators have not been at rest. They've been moving on to new victims. Every day brings another story of a teacher arrested, another story of a childhood that's been shattered, a family that's torn apart by grief and betrayal. I just think the children of America have waited long enough. And I'm saying no more waiting. No more promises about jurisdiction and process and procedures that don't take place. No more passing child molesters on to new schools and new victims. No more defenseless kids like Jeremy Bell falling victim to other child predators. No more excuses for avoiding an up or down vote that passed the House unanimously. Let's act now. Let's protect all our kids. Let's act now to protect the 1.6 million kids in the federally subsidized daycares as the Child Care Development Block Grant Bill does. Let's pass that. I'm for that. But let's also protect the 49.6 million kids that are in our elementary, middle, and high schools. Now, if we do this, we can do this tomorrow. We can do this tomorrow. We'd pass them both tomorrow if we just had a vote. And we'd send two bills to the president's desk. I'm quite confident he would sign them both. He'd sign the Child Care Development Block Grant Bill. He'd protect those 1.6 million kids. And I'm confident he'd sign the Protecting Students from Sexual and Violent Predators Act. And then we'd be protecting the 49.6 million slightly older kids. Mr. President, I urge my colleagues to act now. It's long overdue.